Okay, kids, listen up. We're going to hit some hot spots in the Sunshine State. You know, Florida. We're going to take a video tour of Florida, show you lots of excellent things to see and do. Unless your brain has been fried by Nintendo, you probably know that Florida is one big kid's playground. Yo, check out this preview. Olé, 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 olé. Wow, water, animals, beaches, rides, games, food. What more could a kid want? There are two good things about a video tour. You don't have to spend all that boring time in a car or camper, and you can use it to pick out the places you'd like to go on your real trip to Florida. In which case, you'll have to sell the folks on the idea, then spend all that boring time in the car or camper. Let's get started. We've divided Florida into four zones. It's probably no big deal to you, but parents like to be organized. So we'll humor the people with the big bucks. We'll make our first stops in the northern zone because unless you live in Florida, that's the first part of the state you'll see. The best attractions along the Gulf of Mexico in northwest Florida are the miles of really great beaches. After the boredom of a drive from Minnesota or some other icebox, everybody needs to kick back, get off each other's nerves. By the way, we'll be referring to the folks throughout the tour, but this is the 90s. It could be just mom, just dad, or mom and stepdad, Dad and stepmom, dad and girlfriend, mom and boyfriend. So let's just stick with folks, okay? You're the navigator, right? Grab the map and get the chauffeur headed toward Wakulla Springs, just south of Tallahassee. The water here is a lot cooler than in the Gulf of Mexico, 72 degrees year round. Meaning it's great on a hot summer day, but might turn you a little blue in winter. Water gushes up from the spring, forming the Wakulla River, where you can check out the wildlife on a boat tour. There are a lot of these springs here in Florida. The one just outside Ocala is a little different. It's called Silver Springs, and it features glass bottom boat tours through the jungle-like spring area. The water is just loaded with fish, and lots of wild animals roam the riverbanks. You can also ride a safari jeep through the jungle. Now, find St. Augustine on your map. It's over on the Atlantic coast, south of Jacksonville. Warning, warning. This is one of those educational places because everything is old here. This is the oldest city in America. The Spaniards beat the Plymouth Rock Pilgrims by 55 years. Here's the oldest wooden schoolhouse in the country. They, the hot guys, wore metal suits to the prom. Here's a goof. Thank the folks for the great history lesson. Time to hit the road again. Destination, Alligator Farm. This is one of Florida's oldest attractions. Hey, that one's hitching a ride. What are you snickering about? I'll explain later. Don't try to feed these scaly dudes or you'll have a new nickname, Three Finger Mike. We told you everything around here is old. Marineland is just down the road and it's the world's oldest marine attraction. By the way, summer is the rainy season in Florida, but the porpoise show always goes on. Here's something different, a big old electric eel zapping his lunch. Yeah, Dad, I got a real charge out of it. What a knee slapper. Look, here's that big bass. The one you always tell us got away? By now, you should be all warmed up and ready to hit the central part of Florida. 
Hope you're all caught up on your Z's. Continue south on any major highway, and within an hour, you'll be at Cape Canaveral, the Kennedy Space Center in Spaceport, USA. The best time to be here is when a space shuttle or a satellite is being launched. You can call NASA ahead of time to get a launch schedule and learn the best viewing areas. Spaceport has a lot to see, rockets, space capsules, moon rocks, and there's no admission charge. You might even get to sit in the moon rover. Four forward. Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. There are bus tours of the Space Center and Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. Those are not free. All right already, we're heading for the busiest tourist destination in the country, Orlando. At warp speed, Orlando's just over an hour west on the Beeline Expressway. No, Bart Simpson doesn't live here, dude. But Mickey does, and King Kong, and Baby Shamu, and lots of other characters. First stop, what else? Walt Disney World. With the Magic Kingdom, Epcot, Disney MGM Studios, River Country, Typhoon Lagoon, and Discovery Island, you can't possibly do it all in a day or two. So why not buy a four-day pass the way our cameraman did? Visit Magic Kingdom one day, Epcot the second, then MGM. Go back to the one you like best on the fourth day. Disney World is an experience of a lifetime, so take your video camera and capture Sis boogieing with Goofy. If you're lucky enough to be staying at one of the resorts within the Disney complex or the Fort Wilderness campground, you'll have a lot more time for fun. If you're here in summer, bring the sunscreen and wear shorts and sneakers, not those grody flip-flops. During summer and major holidays, the Disney attractions are open at night. It's a lot cooler, and the lines are often a lot shorter. A few miles away from Disney, right off Interstate Highway 4, is SeaWorld, the world's largest marine life theme park. You may want to spend a whole day here, seeing the 15 shows, including the famous killer whale, Shamu, and baby Shamu. There are lots of neat exhibits, like Penguin Encounter, and the clear plastic tube that takes you underwater through a huge shark tank. No, the sharks don't like the tube. They're well fed, aren't they? Whoa, look at that hairy dude. Yes, sir, Mr. Kong. Anything you want, Mr. Kong. King Kong is one of the many features of Universal Studios Florida. It's part amusement park, part motion picture studio. You hear a lot of screaming on the rides, recreating scenes from movies such as King Kong, Earthquake, and E.T.'s Adventure. There are movie-oriented shows and chances for visitors to play roles in film recreations. If you're lucky, you might even see some films or television shows such as Nickelodeon being made while you're here. And this cool cat. Time for everyone to cool off again? Right in the middle of everything on Orlando's International Drive, you'll find Wet n' Wild. It's a water wonderland where the less adventurous can float down a lazy river, but you'll prefer the gigantic water slides, the surf lagoon, or knee skiing, the Blue Niagara. You can stay in the water so long you look like a prune and walk like an Egyptian. Uh-oh, gator alert. Just on the road toward Kissimmee, not Kissimmee. Bet you won't let the old man pass up that huge set of alligator jaws. It's the entrance to Gatorland, which features, what else? Gators, lots of them. Some even leap out of the water to get their daily chicken ration. <laughs> Pretty gross, huh, sis? Want to play Let's Pretend for a while? Pretend you're Jack Nicholas at Pirate's Cove, one of the biggest putt-putt type golf courses you've ever seen. Hey, sis, that's not candy. You're supposed to putt the ball. <laughs> there are several courses like this scattered around central Florida. We haven't mentioned eating places, and there are just so many, and you're probably into burgers anyway. But you'd probably enjoy medieval times in Orlando. First of all, you can eat with your hands like they did in King Arthur's Day. And while you're eating, you watch knights and sword fights and jousting. That's where they try to knock each other off horses with long poles called lances. This is one place where you'll need to make reservations well in advance. King Henry's Feast is similar, but the theme is slightly different. Here's another idea for evening entertainment, Church Street Station in Orlando. 
There are shops and snack places and a lot of entertainment. You can grab a meal in places like Rosie O'Grady's, Singing Sam's, Red Hot Mama's, or Lily Marlene's Aviator Pub. And there's plenty of live music, Dixieland, country, and western. And in some places, you can join in the singing. OK, it's not MTV or New Kids on the Block, but you can find some rock and roll here, too. And don't miss the Hard Rock Cafe for burgers, music, and those t-shirts that everybody but you seems to have. Heading out of Orlando, we'll make one final stop before leaving the central section of Florida, Cypress Gardens. Water ski shows, the Aquacade, animals, botanical gardens. This is a little more laid back than the frantic pace of Orlando. Now our video tour takes you to West Florida. It's center, Tampa, an easy drive down I-4 from Orlando. The map's covered with what? Well, let's hope somebody knows the way. Tampa is home to the second most popular attraction in Florida, Bush Gardens. No pizza face, you won't have to look at a lot of bushes. There's one of the country's top 10 zoos with 3,000 animals, and there are some wild boat trips. You probably can't wait to get on those multi-G-force rides. Just don't do it on a full stomach, okay? You've got some real little kids with you. They'll like Lowry Park with its pint-sized rides and pet the deer bandy land. You probably won't have to stay here all day and the admission is reasonable. Just a short hop north on the Gulf Coast, you come to Tarpon Springs. Well, there's no spring filled with tarpon. That's a fish. But there is a Greek fishing village. The folks will probably want to pick up some sponges for car washing and other stuff. Maybe you can talk them into a sightseeing trip into the Gulf. A little farther north on US-19, another watery attraction, Weeki Wachi Springs. You'll probably call it Weeki Wacky. Anyway, they have mermaids performing in an underwater theater, and right next door is something different, a water park, Buccaneer Bay. You can swim in the spring of the mermaids. At the north end of our West Florida area, just off US-19, is Homosassa Springs State Wildlife Park. What looks like a walrus without tusks, but isn't? A manatee. Unless you live in Florida, you may have never seen a manatee or sea cow. They're gentle, friendly, and curious, and you can view them here year-round from above and underwater. Being a state park, it's another admission bargain for the folks. Now, if it's not time to head home and Dad isn't grumbling too much about his national debt, you might want to head south, past Tampa to Sanibel and Captiva Islands. They're right off the coast from Fort Myers. There are no major attractions here, but the beaches are great. You can fish right off the shore. And these are the best beaches in Florida for collecting shells. Moms love to collect shells. Years later, someone finds them in the back of a closet, still in the bag. We're heading down the road again, so practice the Tarzan yell. We're going to Jungle Larry Zoological Park in Naples. You can check out the performing apes and elephants. Take an elephant ride yourself. Then head off into the Florida jungle. Watch out for that nasty wild boar. He'll run you right up a tree. Oops. That's a tame Vietnamese pot-bellied pig. Never mind. We'll head out of Naples on Highway 41, known to locals as the Tamiami Trail. Hang a right on State Road 29. In about three minutes, you'll be in Everglades City, ready to start a real adventure. This is the edge of the Everglades National Park. And we recommend three ways to see it. First, there's the Everglades National Park boat tours. And we bet you've never been on an airboat. Jungle Herbs Eden Jet Boat Tours offers a glimpse of the Everglades region you can't get on foot or by car. So does Florida Boat Tours just down the road. Everglades City is in the 10,000 Islands region of the vast Everglades National Park. These big airboats, pushed by powerful aircraft type engines and props and underwater jets, speed the visitor through rivers and streams and across deserted bays. This is not only one of Florida's best fishing areas, it's also a rich breeding ground for marine life and exotic birds. How much wildlife you'll see depends on the time of the year, the time of the day, and the tides. You'll always see pelicans. They'll even land on your boat begging handouts, and the guide usually has a bucket full.
Back on the Tamiami Trail, just a few miles east, Wooten's airboats and swamp buggies. This is a slightly different country from the 10,000 islands. The big airboats take you into the real Everglades, alligator country, miles of sawgrass and water. On the north side of the highway, board a swamp buggy for a ride into the Big Cypress Swamp. The high riding buggies and the airboats are standard transportation for Everglades sportsmen. Along the trail, you pass lots of Indian villages. Then you'll come to Everglades Safari Park. More gators and airboat rides into the glades. There's no other place in the world like the Everglades and very few places where you can ride on an airboat or a swamp buggy. Some gators will come right up to the boat. Don't try to feed them. They can't tell where the fingers end and the snack begins. Safari Park is the closest to Miami of the major airboat operators, only about a half hour away. Since you're this far east, you might as well head right into Miami and the Atlantic coast. Once in Miami, there's plenty to see and do. For example, the Miami Seaquarium is right on the causeway headed to Key Biscayne. The Seaquarium is a home of Flipper, a porpoise who had his own TV show. Well, that was before your time, but Dad will probably tell you all about it. He was probably a flipper freak. There's also a killer whale and lots of sharks and fish. And out on Key Biscayne, you'll find four miles of beaches at Crandon Park. Back on the mainland, stop by Miami's Museum of Science and Space Transit Planetarium. The museum is really a kid's place with far out scientific stuff you can play with. There are laser music shows at the planetarium and stargazing at night. No, not Don Johnson. Uh, Moving south, yeah. you'll come across jungles, like parrot jungle. Yeah. Noisy, colorful birds do shows and will stand on your shoulders and head and leave a Florida decoration on your t-shirt. And you can visit some relatives at nearby Monkey Jungle. The monkeys and apes roam freely. You're in a cage, which is where the folks sometimes think you belong. Since you're in the neighborhood, you might as well check out Metro Zoo, another of the best zoos in America. The animals roam free, separated from visitors by moats. What's a moat? Look it up before you fall in. The white tigers are a featured attraction here. Not far from the zoo is Tamiami Airport, home of the Weeks Air Museum. The owner collected so many planes from World War II and before, he had to open a museum. If you don't act like a total dork, you might be allowed to sit in a cockpit and pretend you're the Red Baron or Top Gun. Most of the planes actually fly, and occasionally the museum puts on air shows. Down US-1 toward the Keys, you'll come across Coral Castle. This may interest the folks more than you. The fascinating thing is how one man moved all those huge chunks of coral into place all by himself without a crane. Pretty weird, huh? Now it's time to go to sea without getting on a boat. Just head down the overseas highway. That's US-1 on your map just below that glob of bubble gum. The Keys are a series of islands connected by the highway, part of which used to be a railroad. One of the first fun places you'll come to is John Pennekamp Coral Reef State Park on Key Largo. Since this is an underwater park, most of the good stuff to see is underwater. There are snorkeling and scuba diving trips and glass bottom boat tours over the coral reefs available. You can see some fish just snorkeling off the beach. And there are fish tanks in the visitor center if you're just too vegged out to move around much. There are several places in the Keys where you can actually swim with dolphins, one of those being Theater of the Sea in Isla Mirada. This area is really big on fishing, but charter boats and guides are super expensive. If you brought a rod, you might want to try fishing from shore or bridge, just to see your mom or sister try to bait a hook with a shrimp. Well, they're not as gross as worms. The lower Keys are where you really think you've gone to sea, especially on the Seven Mile Bridge, which may make mom cover her eyes and soon you'll arrive in Key West. If you remember the song Margaritaville by Jimmy Buffett, he was talking about Key West. 
There are no big splashy attractions here, just a lot of points of interest such as forts, museums, old houses, an aquarium, shrimp boats, and a cigar factory. A good way to see the city is on a conch tour train. Conch? What's that? You know, it's the big pink shell you blow into. The snail-like animal that lives inside is conch. You should try some conch fritters. Most kids think it's like eating rubber bands wrapped in spicy dough. By now, the folks are probably ready to head north and home. There are a few more things to see on the way. Just north of Miami and Hollywood is Atlantis, a big water theme park right beside I-95. It features big water slides, a wave pool, and lots of other water activities, and sometimes has rock concerts on weekends. Atlantis is only open in summer and during the warm weather school holidays. Just a few miles north in Fort Lauderdale is Ocean World. If you haven't seen a dolphin show anywhere else, you might want to stop for a few hours. There are lots of other trained marine animals, aquatic exhibits, and you might even get to pet an alligator. If you're looking for something really different, try Butterfly World. It's in a place called Tradewinds Park, northwest of Fort Lauderdale. What do you mean, get real? When have you ever seen millions of butterflies from all over the world in a tropical rainforest? I mean, it's not like you have to tell your friends when you get home. Okay, last stop, the famous Lion Country Safari west of West Palm Beach. This is the place where the lions, rhinos, giraffes, and other animals roam free. And you drive through in a car. It's like being on safari in Africa. On hot days, the animals don't move around a lot, unless you get out of the car. In that case, you're lion meat. The best times to enter are 9.30 in the morning and 4 in the afternoon, when the animals are the most active. Well, that's our video tour. We think we've covered many of the things a kid might want to do in Florida. Here's a couple of planning tips. Most major attractions are open at night in summer, and most of the water parks are closed in the cool months of winter. The best times to avoid crowds are when other kids are in school meaning you'd have to ditch a few days of school. We'll just promise the folks you'll learn something. We hope we've given you some great ideas for a real trip to Florida. Remember, another vacation is just around the corner and it's never too early to start hinting. Have an excellent Florida adventure. <laughs>